Hi team, I'm TJ Benassik and I'm a product manager with Google Distributed Cloud. Today's presentation is on GDC Sandbox. For today's agenda, we'll start with why Google Distributed Cloud. We'll explain what is GDC Sandbox, touch on the product overview, go into benefits, use cases, and close with a demo and call to action. Google Distributed Cloud builds on the three pillars of sovereignty. Data sovereignty means that the hardware, software, and data remains on your premises. Software sovereignty means GDC embraces open models such as Kubernetes and Anthos. Operational sovereignty means you have a cloud in the box that can be run on your premises, operated by your personnel with no connection to Google or the internet at any time. Not all customers can use public clouds due to compliance regulations, intermittent connectivity, bandwidth limitations, latency, and speed. Google Distributed Cloud offers a cloud-in-the-box experience, bringing Google Cloud's fully managed hardware and software infrastructure directly to your on-premises, data center, edge locations, or co-location facilities. Think of it as a slice of Google Cloud that you can manage locally while still benefiting from Google's experience in security, operations, and innovation. This gives you the flexibility of cloud with all the control and proximity of on-premises infrastructure, ideal for data sovereignty, low latency needs, and modernizing legacy applications. GDC has flexible hardware deployment options. It starts as small as a single server. You can expand into an appliance, or GDC AirGap starts as small as a server rack and can expand into enterprise data center scale. GDC offers a wealth of industry-leading services from Vertex Artificial Intelligence, which provides translation, speech-to-text, optical character recognition, and various AI and ML features. Networking with private networking, VRFs, firewalls, and network address translations, file object and block storage, fully managed Kubernetes, databasing services from PostgreSQL to Oracle and AlloyDB, a wealth of security features and customer managed key identity and access management in various logging technologies, operations via Grafana, which provides logging and monitoring as well as performance, GDC Marketplace, which allows you to bring in best in breed third party software offerings as BYOL into your AirGap clouds, and then virtual machines for various types of machines, images, and GPU enabled processing. GDC Sandbox is a software emulation of GDC AirGap that runs on Google Cloud. This enables customers and partners to build and test services designed for GDC in a managed offering. It's cost effective because you can learn and experiment before you make an investment in a GDC offering. It provides speed to value, removing the needs to worry about hardware provisioning, compliance, configuration, and management. It provides ease of use, so a very familiar Google Cloud experience. It mirrors the API, CLI, and user interface of our Google Distributed Cloud offerings. For features, we provide a managed application operator experience to enable developers. It is based in the GDC air-gapped and appliance experience. There is the GD Cloud interface and UI. We provide virtual machines, Kubernetes containers, observability platform, file object and block storage, database servicing, and Vertex AI, speech to text, OCR, and translation. For limitations, this is a test development type offering, and so we recommend it for 25 users or less to share in resourcing. We pre-provision one organization with two user clusters to maintain the size and scale of the environment. It becomes a 30-day non-persistent environment, so we refresh it with each update. And GPUs are coming in our general availability offering uh, in Q1 of next year. The product vision is grounded in low-side generative AI development, and so the concept is that it's very expensive to have a developer in a high-side production cloud. And so that requires often citizenship, expertise, and security clearances. With GDC Sandbox, you can build a team of developers, develop on the low side, and then push through CICD pipelines into your high side and production clouds. 
We use it as an onboarding enabler for new customers and partners. I like to use the car dealership mentality. And so if I'm at the car dealership, I'm not going to buy a car based on a brochure. I need to see the car. I need to take it for a test drive. I need to ensure that it meets my needs. And that's what we do with GDC Sandbox to enable GDC air gapped, uh, connected and a variety of our portfolio. It also provides a great tool to demonstrate and showcase the applications that you built for your team. And we'll touch on that a little bit more in the demo portion of today's presentation. It's great for a proof of concept. So if you know what your requirements are and you want to proof that out on GDC, uh, you're able to build various workloads and applications and test out the capabilities and the features and the scale. We use it for training labs. So in all of the GDC training programs, both by Google and partners, uh, GDC Sandbox is what we use for the, the hands-on exercises and various training scenarios. And lastly, we use it for ISV Marketplace partners. So they develop their third-party applications to bring you a best-in-breed marketplace. And that's how we keep those uh, offerings up to date and available for your usage. The product architecture, uh, you access it from your local machine uh, via RDP with the Google Cloud CLI. You authenticate through the Google IP proxy, just like you would for YouTube or Gmail or various other Google services. That's letting uh, GDC Sandbox know that you are who you say you are and that you have access to your dedicated instance. You then land on our bootstrapper, which is a Linux machine. From there, you're able to pull up the API command line interface and UI of Google Distributed Cloud. Behind the scenes are 18 virtual machines that we use to emulate the GDC air-gapped hardware. You won't have access to those. That's just for mainly situational awareness in the amount of processing power and resources that are feeding your experience. Down at the bottom is our AI optimized SKU, which is powered by four VMs with NVIDIA A100 GPUs and additional NetApp uh, object storage that will be coming with our GA availability. There's a variety of different use cases on GDC Sandbox. And so this is really showcasing art of the possible for developers. The majority of these were developed uh, based on a containerized application that we host on GDC Sandbox. Uh, a lot of these are open source models and just a variety of things that you can do as a developer to test out the capabilities of GDC for your needs. The Versus are develop low and deploy high approach. And so here uh, I can build a container um, either in the environment or outside of the environment. I can containerize it with Docker. I can transfer it into GDC Sandbox and I can host it as an application on Kubernetes. Um, that exact application will run in my uh, high side production clouds. And so if I transfer it in via a cross domain solution or direct data transfer, that application and those scripts and configurations will run in my production clouds. And so I save myself a ton of time in doing my development low side and become more and more agile as far as how I can develop an application. The next use case are large language models. This is generative artificial intelligence. This use case is based in our Gemma models, which are lightweight text-to-text -text decoder only large language models. You provide it a prompt via text and it provides generative artificial intelligence output. And so I'll show you guys a little bit more of this during the uh, demonstration portion. The next use case is image generation. This is Flux1, an open source AI model used for image generation. It enables users to create high quality images from textual descriptions. The first prompt on the left, it was asked to provide a woman skiing in the Alps. And you can see that it provided a very graphic, uh, vibrant colored image. Um, the one on the right was a prompt saying the first human on Mars. So you can see an astronaut investigating some earth with a spacecraft in the background. So really cool images that you can output and, and really take art of the possible to the next level. Retrieval augmented generation is one of the most popular uh, applications and capabilities in Google Distributed Cloud. And so the idea here is instead of just using generative AI, you're not going to have an internet connection in an gap cloud. And so you take a pre-trained model and you feed it your data. And so the data can be anything, PDFs, files, uh, text-based documents, images. 
And from that, you prompt it with uh, text-based queries and all of the outputs will come from your files and data and it'll reference those as well. So this is very powerful when you have uh, very sensitive or restricted data. Uh, say I have a thousand documents and I need to draw the patterns and enable decision-making. RAG is an excellent workload to be able to do that. This is a vision language model uh, built by Google DeepMind. It leverages generative AI natural language processing against analysis of imagery using OWL2 and Paleogemma. In this use case, the model is identifying aircraft. So you can see it's an overhead view of an airstrip and we asked it to identify jets and it finds 17 jets, including pieces that are being used for maintenance on the runway and one jet that's coming out of the hangar towards the rear. You can follow on with LLM queries to say, what kind of jets are these? Where are they flown? What location might this be? And a variety of other questions. And so this model is really powerful out of the box. There's no additional training in it. And you can use a variety of different pictures. It doesn't have to be overhead imagery. It could be um, wildlife. It could be teddy bears. And it does just a really great job with uh, image recognition and object detection. Next, we'll jump into the demo portion of the presentation. I'll show you guys what GDC Sandbox looks like in practice. So here we are in our GDC user interface. The first thing that I'm going to do is go to Identity and Access Management. Here I can see my accounts. If I want to edit roles, I can do that here. It's as easy as selecting the role and clicking Save. I also have my service accounts. I can set their keys and their accesses. If I go back to home, I can view my clusters. That's how we control the resources. Here we have two pre-created clusters. Here's projects, which is a logical grouping of my resources. And so I've pre-created a project down here. I can control the access. I can align the resources for the clusters. I can land my VMs in there and a variety of other uh, different assets and capabilities. The documentation is embedded in the products of an I'm in an air gap doing development. This is very powerful if I need to learn something or find a script. Here I'm looking at Vertex AI and learning how to enable the APIs for usage. I can download the command line interface bundle uh, if I'm more comfortable with that experience over the UI. I can go to Marketplace and download best in breed third party applications for bring your own licensing. If I roll down a tad bit on the feature blade to the left, I can go to the firewall. Here I can create a new firewall rule to enable access for my workload. So I give it a name such as test. I specify the ports and protocol. We could go TCP 8501. And then I click create. I've actually already pre-created this rule for a streamlet application. So if I click on it here, I uh, get a simple output as far as what that rule is doing. Uh, keeping it simple is very good for firewall and networking hygiene. Here's Vertex Artificial Intelligence. I click on the pre-trained APIs, and you can see I have my optical character recognition, speech-to-text, and translation APIs enabled, so I can feed them documents and provide outputs. This is Grafana, which is our embedded observability suite, which allows you to look at performance and audit logging. Here's Harbor, which is where uh, we have an image repository for storing our various images and containers. And lastly, we'll go to an application. So this is a large language model based in Gemma. And what I'm going to do is uh, really shift into something more similar to Code Gemma to where I'm going to ask it to write a simple machine learning algorithm based on wildlife observation. And so I want to be able to predict where I can see wildlife on my hike using weather forecasting. And I'm asking it to use linear regression and one-hot encoding in that model. So if I don't have a development or software engineering background, I'm able to use this. And so say I'm out in an austere location, uh, say out in a, a desert environment, I don't have an internet connection, I have low bandwidth, and I have a GDC air gapped appliance there. I'd be able to develop a net new application uh, without needing any connection, uh, especially if I'm net new, maybe I have a mission or an organizational need, I'd be able to use this as a starting point to build that application. 
Interesting point here, we're actually not even using GPUs here. That's why there's a little bit of a lag in the query. This is running completely on CPUs. So it shows how powerful this model can be, uh, even with a, a lower level of processing, if you're resource constrained in any way. Uh, if you run this uh, with GPUs, obviously it would be almost instantaneous as far as the output. And now we can see that there's a response. And so it's providing a conceptual outline of what I need to do for data collection, for using time series set of data, uh, and then getting into feature engineering. So for one hot encoding, I wanna have things like the weather conditions, sunny, cloudy, rainy, uh, other features that may be of use, uh, could be the direction of the wind, north, south, east, and west. The linear regression model is more so numeric, so I can use the temperature, the wind speed, the barometric pressure, and then it gives some recommendations for how I can train and evaluate that model and what the inputs and outputs are expected to be uh, with this model. It's asking to use some example data for training, uh, how it uses the one hot encoding uh, for various outputs, how to build a feature matrix, targeting variables, and then making predictions. So once we get into the making prediction examples, it's writing the code that I can use for this model. And you can see it there. The call to action, contact us to discuss your generative AI needs, review the product capabilities at the GDC product page, and learn more about GDC Sandbox in the documentation. Thanks for watching. Learn more at cloud.google.com and subscribe for more content like this. We look forward to partnering with you in your Sovereign Cloud journey and learning how GDC Sandbox can enable your generative AI development needs.